women are not allowed the luxury to be whack. Imagine if a woman came out rapping like Playboy Cardi. Never. Right. Never would be allowed, never mm -hmm. would be accepted and propped up to such a high position that Playboy Cardi is. It's the same dynamic with race. You have to be twice as good to get half as much as a black person, as a woman. What's up, geniuses? Welcome back to For The Record, and I'm your host, Rob Markman. Today we have a very special episode, a very important episode, too. I think we're in a dope time in music where quite frankly, the women are running shit in hip hop, right? Megan Thee Stallion is killing it with her big old freak song. And there's a lot of talk on social media, in the media, a lot of criticism. You know, that this topic comes up every so often about women and sexuality and rap. And we just wanted to nip it in the bud, man, and speak straight facts and talk about Megan Thee Stallion one time. So I got a dope panel that I'd like to introduce. First of all, from OK Player, the music editor at OK Player, her word is strong. Woo. EVA, I need welcome to For The yes. Record. Thanks for having me. Nah, thank you for coming. Long time friend of mine, been an admirer of her work. Marjorie Estevez, features editor over at BET Digital. Thank you. All thank right. you for having me. Huge fan of both these women. Oh, uh, I know. <laughs> thank you for coming. And then finally, she is no stranger to For The Record. I, I feel blessed every time oh, that she comes gosh. to the show because I feel like every time is going to be the last time where she's like, you know what, Rob? <laughs> I'm not coming. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm busy. Oh, stop. Never. But, not but I, for you. But I know good things are coming. If you're busy, if you can't make it, I know you're working on big things. Mm -hmm. Scotty Beam, TV personality, co-host of the Black Girl Podcast. Absolutely. Welcome to For The Record. Thank you, Rob. How you doing? Blessed. That's what's up. We're all blessed. I, man, I wanted to have this conversation because, and it's a slippery slope, right? Because I think as media, and as more traditional media, that we have a responsibility to not put too much stock into what goes on in, in social media, on Twitter, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times somebody would tweet something with no really, for no reason, it'd be somebody we never even heard of and all of a sudden becomes a story. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's dangerous. And it's a little bit what we're doing here, but I want to be preemptive about it. Um, first of all, we're talking about Megan Thee Stallion. Um, and I want to say that we had planned to do this show. She recently um, suffered a loss in her family. Her mother passed away. And we were planning to do the show even before that. We decided to continue with the show on this topic. But, you know, we want to send a recipe shout out mm -hmm. to yeah. Megan's mom and her whole family and send our condolences and with respect and love. 100%. Um, but here she is. She's pretty. Let's just talk about the excitement. Are, are we excited about Megan Thee Stallion? Like, what's going on? It feels like some new energy coming back into hip hop. Some much needed energy. EVA, what do you think? I think everyone is very much so excited about Megan for a number of reasons. The first reason that comes to my mind is because she's from the South, and if you look at the trajectory of mm. each woman who's made it to the top of the top of the top in hip hop, where have they been from? Mostly new York, East Coast, yeah, right. So the fact that she's from the South is a very interesting dynamic, I think, to add to the conversation, especially since she can rap in a quote-unquote arbitrary traditional sense. Mm -hmm. And by arbitrary traditional sense, I mean through the framework of what people consider, um, you know, more the East Coast staple, the well, origin. traditionally call lyrical, right? Lyrical. I, I, I was trying to avoid I'm that word. word. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. No, I'll say it so, so you don't have to. I understand, but the context of lyrical... Well, I, I'm one of those people who, who's very lax with the word lyrical mm -hmm. because I feel like I, I don't necessarily abide by the traditional sense of what lyrical is considered. But quote unquote, she's lyrical, right? Mm -hmm. So that superimposed with the fact that she's from the South. Um, she has the look and that type of appeal, the aesthetic appeal. Um, and also, I think... If we're being honest, because of that antiquated way in which people treat women in rap when they pop up, I think people are excited because they always are very selective and singular with it. It's one at a time, right? So there's Nikki, and who's the next it girl. They treat women who are in rap as if they're it girls, so they have to be one at a time. Mm -hmm. So at this point, it feels like people are very excited for her because... They want to kind of like insulate her and make her the next it girl and just put all their focus on her as opposed to just opening it up and see all the different rappers that are out right now. So I think all those different elements contribute to why people are excited about her. So, Scotty, you want to go? Oh. I feel like oh. we're going to get some more too. We're going to go down the line. 
I, I felt like Scotty had. No, it. I'm just I'm I'm very excited about Megan um, and all the up and coming up coming you know uh, rappers who happen to be women. I think it's very important for us to actually sit there and listen to them because everybody is telling their own story or different aspects right. of their story. And with Megan, I love how confident she is, right? Through you know her lyrics and freestyling, I mm. love watching her freestyle. I love being over, you know, her being over these fire ass uh, beats and being able to talk about anime and you know different things that mm. she's into. And because of that, other women feel seen and they feel liberated. And they're like, finally, somebody who's speaking my language. Now I could jam, like now I can love this. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I just I love that people are f feeling seen when it comes to Megan Thee Stallion. And you know, I I'm behind it 100,000 billion trillion percent. I love her. Marjola. Yeah, the, I wanted to piggyback off of what she was saying because I think that part of the exciting thing with uh, Megan Thee Stallion is that she's from the South. Um, the, I think one of her bigger predecessors was Trina, you know, right? Like, yeah. that's who I thought of before, um, who else came before her. I'm super excited about her being from Houston. I'm super excited about knowing the lineage that she comes from. Um, the only, you know, I wish that, and again, you know, rest in peace if her mom was around, I would have wanted to learn more about her mother. As someone who was born in 88, who was raised between, you know, the Bronx and Central Florida, I don't know who Hollywood was. Mm -hmm. um, but apparently she had a lot of local acclaim. I would have loved to have known who Megan's mom was. Um, I think that would have added to, I guess, my appreciation. Um, I look forward to growing up, like growing with Megan Thee Stallion, because I feel like, um, as someone, as a culture, as a collective culture, we like to compartmentalize women who come into the game. And I want to see what, you know, the fact that she's taking up so much space, her, you know, with body, with, with, with voice, with, with lyrical aptitude, lyrical, mm -hmm. um, I want to see us like I want us to grow with her and not have not like you said limit her or already like project her to be this next it girl. I just want her to do be able to like for us to give her the space to do her thing. Right. No. And and I think that's super important. And and to EA's point, this point of that that we need an it girl, right? Like mm -hmm. there, there can only be one. Um, as a rap fan, I, I never understood that, and, and I want to figure out how we get past that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because we don't do it to, you know, at, at the same time, we, we, even though in this competitive Drake, Cole, Kendrick, there's still a camaraderie mm -hmm. there. K Kendrick and Cole clearly have a camaraderie. Cole and Drake mm -hmm. clearly have a camaraderie. And, and while we may debate, and I think it's healthy to debate in hip hop, who's better. Mm -hmm. It seems like when it comes to the women, those debate always turn super toxic and ultimately just hurt the culture and the music. Mm -hmm. together. Um, what are some of the ways that we could cut that out, that we could break that cycle? Because it feels like we have a lot of women on the come up right now, and it feels like an exciting time. Stop thinking of uh, of these rappers who happen to be women as just women. Right. They rap, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times they, I don't know why it's, you know, they, they focus so much on the drama when it comes mm -hmm. to women and not men. Mm. They love, you know, to pick apart women and, you know, make it sound like they have beef with different people. And, you know, that's always the first conversation. It's never, hey, you you hear this girl? Right. Like, listen to this skill. Let's talk about right. what she's talking about. What's the content of her rap? You know what I'm saying? So I think it's important to just look at them as the rapper, not just a woman. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I really just, like I said, I really want us to just give them, give women the room to, to be themselves. I, we've spent eons in hip hop, we have spent eons letting men talk about the drug enterprise, talk about rape, talking about et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And now because women want to twerk and talk about, you know, leaving you on read, leaving men on read or turning the tables on, you know, can we curse? Yeah, yeah. Fuck it, you can curse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Turning the tables on ancient men, you know, it's just like now it's a problem, right? Either you, either you're a twerker or you're someone who can spit. No, I can actually do both and want to do both. Right. So I just want us to give the same room to that we gave Drake, that we gave Kendrick, that we great, that we gave our favorite artists. I want us, I want us to give women the same exact room and liberty and autonomy to be themselves in front of us. Mm -hmm. Drake kind of the king of leaving you on red. I feel like Drake leaves you on red too. <laughs> <laughs> I DM all my exes. That's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Drake. Well, Drake is a special kind of emotional that I appreciate. So, well, I, I feel like, well, number one, none of this is going to be fixed unless we fix all the isms that are plaguing society in general, right? right? 
because none of this started with hip hop. Mm -hmm. None of this started with music. So until it sounds so cliche at this point, because these are buzzwords at this point, but until we literally dismantle patriarchy, dismantle misogyny, dismantle sexism, none of this is going to be fixed, right? right? And do you remember? You remember when uh, Kendrick came out with the whole "He's the King," and he mentioned all these oh, yeah, rappers, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. and he didn't mention Nicki Minaj, mm -hmm. who was at the top of the top of the top. Mm -hmm. And I believe she did an interview afterward taking offense to the fact that he didn't mention her. And it was brought up that it was kind of offensive that he didn't mention her. But that's solely because people treat women who rap like it's a separate genre for mm -hmm. some reason. Like they can't be mentioned amongst men. When it's literally ahistorical to say that women are suddenly on the rise in hip-hop, women have always been rapping. Mm -hmm. There's always been a variety of women in rap in every generation if you think back mm -hmm. like name all the women from the 80s to the 90s till now it's been consistent yeah. there hasn't been three women in the game it's been so many right. so that kind of revisionist history when it comes to women's presence in hip-hop and people just kind of segregating genders in hip-hop mm -hmm. i think all of that contributes to how we engage with women and how uh, men in particular engage with women and their music one of the things that was really dope recently, and and again, because I feel like that there's a, a, a lot going on. There's, there's and, and it also, like, I've seen comments like, yo, the XXL freshman should be like all women this year, which would be dope. Like, there's certainly enough women right now I have hot a little with qualm him with to that. make the case. I don't, I'm not saying I, I have agree a qualm with that. With that because, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying yeah, I agree with that. Cause right. There's so you want to be you also want to be counted part of the rappers the best sure. of the best the rappers right yes everyone sure. should be included but the fact that it's even a conversation and am I by going you didn't agree with that I'm I'm not not that I didn't agree I just have a qualm with it yeah. I just feel like that would sort of perpetuate that segregation mm -hmm. of okay let's have a separate list for women and then what happens next year same old you can go right, <laughs> back. right. Go right back but if we're being honest. I think if you look at this year and last year, the list should be majority women because mm -hmm. who's been making the most noise these past two years, these past mm -hmm. year and a change, right? Mm -hmm. So without this sort of performative uh, way of highlighting women, it should really just be an organic way to say, all right, this is who's really been making noise. And the list should be majority women. If it's not, then we know something's wrong. Mm -hmm. I, I like... Um... And we have been covering her, um, both of these women, both of these artists here at Genius um, for a while, Rico Nasty and Doja Cat. Yeah. Um, you know, even before Moo, I think when, when a lot of people, when Doja Cat became a meme, but this this recent song that they dropped, this Tia Tamara song, Fire. I thought was ill. They came up here, they did their press run together. <laughs> they did Verify together. Like you've seen them together. I can't wait to see them perform it together. Like, you know, that's coming. Um, Super exciting! Like I, I think both of those women are, are deserving, as well as as Megan Thee Stallion. I think we're all counting down to um when JT is 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 out of jail. We could see the City Girls like really, yeah, you, you know, say that like energy. flourish, oh. right? <laughs> who, who else are we excited about? Who are, uh, some of the Malibu, women Mitch, South Bronx. Oh, uh, um, <laughs> you from the X? Yes, on, South Bronx, Malibu, Mitch. Scotty I love. from the X too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, people, I am. Yes. Um, are we going to run down a list? Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Tiara Just who, Wack. We'll make... Tiara, Tiara Wack, Wack. I'm really excited about. Um, also, she's not a freshman, but uh, Carrie Fro. Of course. You know what I'm saying? I love her last project. I think. It's very therapeutic right. and beautiful and vulnerable. So I would love, you know, to see her grow. Um, Mumu Fresh, she's not new either, but she can, you know, uh, Mumu Fresh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love her and she can spit. And I also want more people to acknowledge her as well. Right. You know what I'm saying? How great she is. So, yeah, those are some people that I really, really, really like right now. I think someone really exciting out of New York for me uh, is Melly. I'm super, I'm super Melly. excited about Melly. I okay. was so happy that you guys did the showcase with her over yeah. the summer. Um, I'm riding with her again right. for so many reasons. Um, she's Fa just this... Phases drops this week. Yeah, so yeah, her debut drops album this is week. Coming. Yeah. I'm excited about that. She, uh, she's gonna do her show at SOBs. Yeah. Excited about that. Um, yeah. And Chica. 
Okay. Chica, Chica, yeah. Chica is um, incredible. Jungle Pussy, she's not new. She's Jungle not Pussy. Yeah, yeah, Jungle Pussy, yeah, Ben, yeah. Ben, yeah. Cayenne. Cayenne right. can really spit. I fuck with Dreezy too. Dreezy is dope. I fuck with Dreezy. Like Kelly 47, also right. not new, but like, yeah. it just, when she first, when I first seen her with the ski mask, and she ain't never took it off since, mm -hmm. but she also ain't never stopped being fire mm -hmm. since. Um, who else? Do I, I mean, does Snow the Product is somebody that I've been Man, fucking with like on the independent you. scene. I'm so happy that she's product. off. Atlantic, I, I felt like wow. that didn't work for her. Yeah. I think independence worked for her, like it works for some people. Yeah. Um, Princess Nokia, amazing. I was in South by Southwest and saw um, Light Skin Keisha perform. Mm, I like her. She killed it because she came up and, and it, it was a showcase. Lil Baby was headlining, St. Mm -hmm. John, designer. Mm -hmm. So I was hosting something in South by Southwest and everybody was, was really dope and had energy, man. But I knew it was something different when. Light skin Keisha took the stage. She had mm. five dancers with her. Mm. They came, they did a chair dance. Like she went up there to put on a show. Like mm. it wasn't, I'm just not gonna go up there and rap to mm. you. Like they had their whole thing planned out. Young baby Tate. Young baby, young baby Tate. Tate. I love she baby sings Tate. too. You know yeah. who I seen that, that I wanted to shout out? And I, I've been looking for records because all I know her from is I just recently seen her rapping on, on Twitter and it went a little viral. But um a young woman by the name of Lady London, um, with three N's at the end. Hmm. I just seen on Twitter, I got to shout her out. If, if you know Lady London, tag on this. She has a dope style. I'm waiting for these records yeah. now. She said she got an EP on the way. Yeah. Um, I think she's from the West Coast. Don't don't um, let me misquote okay. you. But Lady London with three N's at the end. She was super dope. Um, I kind of want to ask you, though, before go we ahead, move please. on, I want to ask you what you think as a man in this culture, in this business, what we should be doing. I, yeah, you know, I think it's... I, to elevate women. I think it's unfair and I, I think about it a lot because I you know, I was the type of hip hop fan when I was growing up. I would buy everything. I you know, I had the most CDs out of anybody on my block. So it wasn't a problem for me to go out and get Lauren Hill, but also have Little Kim. And I think Foxy Brown's Broken Silence is one of the best albums ever. Mm -hmm. You know, but at the same time I was listening to Stretch and Bob when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So I was in tune to what Bahamadia was doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that that's why, and, and, and no disrespect, because I think Rap City is her own thing. But you know, like Rap City like gave me a like a Bahama Dia vibe. It just reminded me of, of things that I used to love. Or hearing Queen Latifah and Moni Love on the same record. So mm -hmm. I've always been that type of hip hop fan. Like, you know, when Total did the remix and it had all of the yeah. women on it. Like that was the only time that Kim and Foxy was on the record at the same oh, time. Yes. Like these are classics. So Brandy, <laughs> I wanna be down with Yo Yo oh and it's Queen Latifah, like. like and MC Light, like, so I was always in tune to that. I think it has to go back, and and EVA was making this point, I think it has to go back to skills. Like, you know, if we're judging what we like and what we elevate on the merit of, of, of skills and how it makes us feel as music and, and, and stop looking at it as, oh, she's a woman MC, she's a male MC. I just also came up with this notion of being on social media that there's dudes who will openly admit, also people say the stupidest shit on Twitter and people will say anything, but <laughs> there's dudes who will admit like, oh, I don't listen to female rap. I yeah. never knew that to be a thing. Mm -hmm. It's a real thing. Um, yeah, you know, I, I think, and, and, and what EVA said was right too about breaking down the societal problems first, but I also believe that hip hop has a lot of power to change things. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would love to see that movement start within hip hop because really what that's saying is that movement is starting within a younger generation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and we're teaching the folks older than us how this world should really be. You know, one thing, especially in the media, and this is super long winded, but I'm thinking in real time, is um, I didn't like what happened with Nikki and Cardi. And for me, that that's a place to start. I think the pitting of women against each other has to stop. You know, and again, I, you know, I think the artists themselves have to take blame as well, but in the media, you know, to get that headline is, it, it, you know, it's clicks to get yeah. mm -hmm. put two women against each other. You know, as, as fans on Twitter and fan armies, like the, the easiest thing is to pit two women against each other. I, for me personally, I think that's the first step as a fan in hip hop and as somebody in the media is I think we have to stop pitting women against each other mm -hmm. and creating spaces for where women feel comfortable collaborating and don't feel necessarily in competition or that there can only be one and then to start to listen to women 
as the whole thing starts to elevate. You know mm. what I'm saying? Yeah. I think the interesting aspect of that being from the media end is now that hip hop has surpassed rock and is the number one genre, what's happening? Every outlet is covering hip hop, right? Mm -hmm. So you have fashion mm -hmm. outlets covering hip hop. You have style outlets. You have uh, all these the mainstream, you, you, all these mainstream outlets. Even the Atlantic covers hip hop. You can find the city girls in the Atlantic yeah. mm -hmm. at this point, right? So all these mainstream outlets and all these outlets who aren't particularly uh, knowledgeable in the hip hop history yeah. or the actual music and culture are covering hip hop. So what can they easily latch on to to get their own coverage of the most popular genre in America? They can latch on to everything that's outside of the music, meaning mm -hmm. drama, mm -hmm. personal politics, and mm -hmm. all these other things, what somebody's wearing. They can latch on to all those different elements, everything except the music. Right. So when that happens, we get all these different types of narratives that kind of overshadow the music. And um, I think that really contributes to the idea that two rappers like Cardi and Nicki could be pitted right. against each other. I, I think that's an excellent point. But what that also does, I think, for more traditional hip hop or more outlets rooted more in hip hop or rooted in culture, now you're competing mm -hmm. against exactly. people. So now you got to Now it's almost like you got to keep up with the Joneses, exactly. and, and we got to do more to set a line. Because I've seen that very same thing that you're talking about. I remember when when. Nikki dropped Barbie Dreams, and most of the mainstream outlets that covered it that I saw labeled it as a diss record. Yeah. Oh, she's dissing all the men. They didn't know. And yeah. I'm like, hold on, this is tradition. This is Biggie. <laughs> yep. This is like, this That's isn't tradition. Cent. This is 50 Cent, How to That's Rob. This, these type of records have a history mm -hmm. within our culture. How do you not get it? Because mm. you're not from it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you're not invested in, in knowing about it. You mm -hmm. want to quit. The and, quick clip. and that speaks to who do you have to document this? Who right. who's being hired? Who's being commissioned? Who's being propped up to document this mm -hmm. on all ends, on the hip hop end, and on all these other mainstream outlets ends? Because even when it comes to back to the woman and man dynamic, there needs to be more women telling these stories. There needs mm -hmm. to be more women interviewing women, right? To take it back to Megan Thee Stallion, OK Player just ran an interview written by um, a Texas writer named Dahlia Jones. Mm -hmm. She interviewed Megan, and she's been a fan for a long time. She knew the history of mm -hmm. Megan. She knew how to how to tell her story from the angle of a black Southern woman mm -hmm. who knows rap. Mm -hmm. So when you get better at, uh, essentially, this is about diversity. Like, diversity isn't always for the corporate world. You know what I mean? Like, hip hop outlets need this, too. So when we get better at amplifying the right voices, then all these narratives can be properly told. Mm -hmm. what, one, one narrative that, that I think is, is, could get misconstrued and is getting misconstrued, but I love the way that Megan handles it is, 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 and we touched on it a little bit earlier, is her sexuality and her music and her really owning it. Um, she told Complex, she said, dudes could talk about sex all day long. They could talk about drugs. They could talk about killing people. Marjorie made this very point. Um, that's their whole body work. And me being a woman, I don't want to shoot you. I'm not in the game. I'm not popping pills. So what? I'm not about to talk about that. So I talk about what I, I love on my body. I talk about what I like to do. So if you want to listen, you can. If you don't, that's on you. Like, fucking unapologetic. Like, this is what it is. And calling out the bullshit. Right. And shit like that makes people uncomfortable. Because they're not used to that. They're not used to pe people being like, listen, I'm not here to please you. Right. I'm here to make my art. And art has never, we talked about tradition, art has never been traditional, especially right. when it comes to music. You know what I'm saying? So when you know, you're know you making music that liberates others, it makes people who aren't as free uncomfortable. And because of that, we have those tweets that come out about either it's twerking or it's or it's rapping. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like so, the world is that. Right. It's this or that. You know what I'm saying? And because a lot of people aren't used to, to of women being liberated and feeling liberated and confiding with each other and laughing and singing and doing all these things with each other, I think for some reason they must feel like they must say something mm. to make us upset again or get us riled up again. And I think that tweet was one of those ways like where we didn't have time to celebrate her, but we had time. We we switched our like time to actually go at the dude. Mm -hmm. And I think some of them want that. 
because they don't want us to celebrate and champion her as much as we do. Mm. And that bothers me a lot. I'm, I'm very confused as to why people are acting like this is new. Like right. women rapping about sex is new. It's not new. Mm -hmm. Like I don't understand why people are acting so brand new about this. Maybe it's because within every iteration of it, they just don't like it still. Because right. of the social tra traditions that they're used to about how women need to be sexy in the sheets and or lady in the streets or whatever right. it is that they live by every day. And because, you know, also the generation before us wasn't that big on that either. You know what I'm saying? I do think that sometimes they uh, they put a lot on us. And then, like, these people come down and they say, you know, you can twerk or you can rap. Or no lady, you know, raps about her body like that. Or, you know, it, it's just... a. I think a lot of times, like we're still tradi people really want us mm. to still live in these traditions. And that drives me crazy. Marjorie, you had no a point. until right. So women have this is not the first time women are doing this, and it, it it isn't the first time that women are talking about whether in hip hop or outside of hip hop, uh, talking about their sexuality and owning it or whatever. Have you read Maya Angelou's The Phenomenal A Phenomenal Hello. Woman? Like the opening stanza is about the power behind Hello. her physicality, who in this sense happens to also be a big bodied black southern woman. Mm -hmm. right. So like it's not new, and I just feel like language which makes a huge difference, of course, which is the difference between saying uh, bullshit or bovine, uh, bovine excrement, right? Like right, that's, you know, right. like the, there's that. Um, I think that Megan Thee Stallion is, for her age, is very well aware of who she is in the world. I think she's very well aware of all she, of all the women that she encompassed. Um, and one of the lyrics that I love from her, her Stally freestyle is when she says, all your favorite rappers uh, uh, just do onomatopoeias, uh, but y'all don't want to hear y'all just want to see her. And for me, mm. that just meant like, we always want to see women, but we never want to hear what they got to right. say. Mm -hmm. And I think Megan is, is driving that home where it's just like, you're going to see me because I'm big bodied and I look this good, but you're also going to see that I'm going to go toe to toe with your favorite rapper, right. mm -hmm. like period. Right. Right. I think that's an interesting point about the onomatopoeia in that lyric, because number one, women are not allowed the luxury to be whack. Mm. Number two, <laughs> imagine if a woman came out, uh, quote unquote, like someone like Playboy Cardi is not considered traditionally lyrical. Right. Imagine if a woman came out rapping like Playboy Cardi, never. Right. Never would be allowed, never mm -hmm. would be accepted and propped up to such a high position that Playboy Cardi is. Mm -hmm. Playboy Cardi is everywhere. He's successful, is he not? Mm -hmm. he's, he's, he's successful. Mm -hmm. A woman c probably could never make it to that, uh, to that status, rapping like that. So it's, it's the same dynamic that I think, to put this into perspective for men, because they never seem to understand this, it's the same dynamic with race. You have to be twice as good to right. get half as much as a black person, as a woman. Right. That's women in any industry and mm -hmm. also women any in, in hip hop too. Mm -hmm. I know all of us have, you know, witnessed sometimes when they say, Oh, you're in the hip hop? Mm -hmm. What's the track on, you know, Nas's uh, I am? Right. Like I'm like, nigga, I don't right. I, can I say that I like hip hop? First of all though, you bullshit, because you, like, you, like, you, like, you probably do know the track that they no, talking about. Saying, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but I'm like, why do I have to be tested? Right. Or right. I can post something on Instagram that just happened. I had posted um I had posted Jay Electronica, right? Right, and somebody like what? a few guys. What do you know about that? that? To me what so is many times. wow? What yeah. or MF Doom? Right, oh my right. God! How do you know, I know. why? Right. Even I post a camera. I was like, what you know about Dipset? Right. Dipset? Like yeah, everybody yeah. knows. Right. It's, it's also I think part of it too, and it's not excusing because I think that is absolute bullshit. But I think a lot of it, especially on social media, is men not knowing how to strike up a conversation uh -huh. with, oh God. with a woman. Like, it, it's like the most immature, because when you look at it, it's the most immature shit That ain't the ever. way, bro. You know what I'm saying? Nope. It's not. It's not. That ain't it. That ain't it. That is not <laughs> it. I'm telling you, it's just so, so I, I think it. it goes the same way for uh, women in rap, you know right. what I'm saying? You have to be on top of it at every time. There cannot be no whack song because the moment right. you put out a whack song, you dead, you're dead, done. Out of here. We don't like it. You or, know what I'm or the moment you put out a kind of gimmicky song, you get propped up and then your talent gets dismissed. Doja right. Cat, number I one think, example. I think Doja Cat, because she was putting out music way before. Exactly. When she Move. put out a gimmicky, basic, mm -hmm. uh, very limited joke of a song, that Basically. even she said was a joke of a song, what happened? She it's goes viral, she's a number one sensation. Women are not allowed to have right. fun. Mm -hmm. But I, I love the, the way she handled, like she owned it. Like she, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, she I'm did, gonna she capitalized I'm gonna put on this, off this, of this it. This cow costume, I'm gonna win. And then guess what? They tried to cancel her right. over old tweets. Right. You remember? And then she came back right. and put out a fire record 
Right. And I don't know if this record is getting as much traction as the Moo record. Mm. It, it it never does. And you know, I think I think it's also speaks to where we are in trolling and, and, and artists feeling the need to have to make a meme yeah. out of their music as well. But yeah. again, if you've been following Doja Cat, like she's made dope records before Moo. And like I said, this Tia Tamara record, like I'm in the video. The wordplay and the shit, the way they're having fun, like her and Rico Nasty killed it. It is one of the hottest new records out to me right now. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And she ain't had to put on the cow costume to do it. <laughs> yeah. I would love to see more posse cuts with right. women. That yeah, that, that that's kind of what I'm what I'm waiting for too, man. Like again, but I think that also goes down to to us and men and taking on the responsibility is is making it not making women feel that they have to compete against each other mm-hmm. or there can only be one. You know, mm-hmm. um, I'm all for some competition, right? You know what I'm saying? I love competition in rap. I will say that's intrinsic to hip hop, right? right. Yeah. I, I love it with women. I love it with men. Right. As long as it's on a track, I like to hear my beef on tracks. Right, but men, but traditionally too, men could get on a record and almost battle each other on that record or try to get the best verse. But it, it don't have to be. You just don't got to split. Like if you remember, just in my mind. Um, Jay Z on the Hard Knock Life album, Reservoir Dogs, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, with the locks and Jay Z and Sauce mm-hmm. Money and Styles P. I don't give a fuck who you are. So mm-hmm. fuck who you are. Who you think he was talking to? Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, <laughs> he's directing that energy at, at Rockefeller. I remember the locks were up here and they said the first record they ever did with Big, you'll see Big is dissing them mm-hmm. on the record. They, 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 the locks are fresh off the block and they're talking about. All this, 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 this money that they have, that big, no, they ain't got because they mm-hmm. just got their deal. And big comes in, they talking it, but ain't living it. Like, mm-hmm. first line. So, but he didn't have beef with the locks. We didn't pit Biggie and Locks mm-hmm. against each other. We were part of the same crew. So, I think because of hip hop, women should compete, still sharp and shell. On the track, all the time. I'm but we shouldn't it. pit them against each other no. to wear. Yeah. That's why I love motorsport. Right. Because even before we got the context of it, I felt like it was so good to hear Nikki and Cardi juxtaposed, mm-hmm. right. to hear their skill sets juxtaposed. And I think it was very deliberate by whomever engineered that to just have the verses back to back. Of course. I, oh my of God. Course. I loved yeah. it. Yeah. But, but it was on the record. But you know what would even be even better is to be able to see them perform that. To be yeah. able to see. Yeah. I, I remember. Um, at Summer Jam a couple of years ago, Hot 97 Summer Jam, you might have insight to this. I don't know if you can speak on it, but um, I think it was fabulous at the time was trying to bring out Little oh, Kim yeah, and Foxy happen. Brown on stage oh, at the same time. That was not that probably That was at least the thought. Yeah, that, the was, that, was, that was, was sweet. Thought. That was a great <laughs> nice thought. thought. That was a great really thought. <laughs> that would have really but, but, did some things. But what a shame, even 15 years after their beef, even 15 years after their thing, that we still can't see that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I think it means a lot. Hopefully, hopefully, man, I'm, I'm still holding out hope for that one day we see Nikki and Cardi mm-hmm. do some shit because at the end of the day, two of the hottest artists that yeah. we got, why shouldn't they collaborate? Why can't they collaborate? Yeah. Why can't they well, be on the same stage? I also think women should be able to have the agency to not rock with someone also. Yeah. Like if they really That's don't rock with each yeah. other, mm-hmm. I, I don't, feminism is not about being kind, mm-hmm. you know, being besties with every woman, mm-hmm. you right. know what I mean? It's about upholding these values that kind of dissolve everything that's keeping women in general down. So um, if they don't rock with each other, they don't rock with each other. But I think, I think we should also pay attention to who they actually shout out and engage with. Like who, who, who are the women that Nikki actually shouts out mm-hmm. and engages with? Ms. Banks, Malibu Mitch, Malibu Megan. Mitch. Who are the women that Cardi shouts out and get, engages with Asian dolls, city mm-hmm. girls, you know? Mm-hmm. So um, instead of trying to force two people together who right. don't rock with each other, I think we should. Right. Kinda... I love my collaborations yeah. uh, genuine because you can hear exactly. it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. A lot of times you won't even see them perform it together. So you're like, why am I? Why? Mm-hmm. I don't need to hear it. Or I, I don't even need it. I don't uh, need that. Mm-hmm. So I do like them genuine. I I will be just cool with them being like, hey, le- let's leave each other alone because yeah. artistically we're just mm-hmm. not. Yeah. We're not you know like minded, and that's cool. And I, I take what you said, and I'm like, of course you're right. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. it, what I just said, and then your response to that, like having you all here with me today allows me. I think hopefully we're teaching the audience something and, and making the audience because I think a lot of it is self reflection. Like yeah. What are we doing to actually hurt this thing that we all mm-hmm. love? 
Mm-hmm. And you know what I'm saying? That this is why I had all of you here to listen as well as to talk and to learn and, and, and hopefully we can just walk out of here and step one starts tomorrow, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I did want to make a point going back to um, just women in rap period, more specifically black women in rap. Um, I just want as a collective, us as a collective to give black women rappers the agency to be their full selves because I don't hear this narrative of either be this or that when it comes to Iggy Azalea. And right. I think that she's one of the most um, unoriginal people that I've seen step onto hip hop. Mm-hmm. And like, I just don't see that happening with that with her. She's she's applauded and she's glorified for being a white woman doing black girl things. Mm. So well, we, we just see that in, 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 in general mm. right now. This is the time that we're in. So right? you know what I'm saying. So <laughs> give Megan Thee Stallion her her floor, right. give her her space, right. hers and and her and and her, and her you know her ours and ours like. I don't, I don't need, yeah, I, I, I brought up Iggy Azalea because I just saw her new video and I was right. just like. She has a new video? I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> That's a shame. Just that. Mind. I just needed to leave oh, that. that. Right. Because, you know. I didn't know she was. Oh, Iggy. Wow. Yeah. You're thinking about I Azalea didn't know she was still I thought she said Iggy. Azalea. No, no, no. And I was like. Iggy Azalea. Oh. Iggy Azalea. Right. First of all, Azalea Banks is. Is insanely tra- talented. Talented. Insanely. Exactly. Insanely talented. Makes she she so won't get her flowers until. I wrote. Until, no. Until no. years from now. She won't get her flowers. I had a whole Twitter shame. thread right. about that. But she is it. She's it. Okay, Iggy, all right. Iggy, Iggy. I, I, I saw you confused. I but you see, like, even, me, even me, I had to pause too because I really couldn't remember. I was like, Iggy Azalea? Right. Like, it was, yeah. I didn't it's, know she was still rapping. Right. She did oh, a whole yeah. video dropped the other day where she looked, where it looks like she, like, I mean, the producer, the director addressed it. Um, people thought that she was copying Cardi. It seemed very eerily right. the same, but the producer was the same producer. Well, so J- I Jay, guess, White, Jay White produced it. Yeah, so yeah, that's so what I'm saying. He addressed money, it. He, yeah, he yeah, addressed it. So obviously. And they had a black girl in the coffin or something like that. Well, is that what they were making? They drew, it was a, I think the car hit up. Twi- I seen yeah. it on Twitter. <laughs> I didn't expect to see it, watch it, none of it. Of it. it was just really, it's, mm, mm. No, that's very true. Well, but, right. But, you know. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I think we, yeah, I think we're going to end on that now. I think we're going to be rendered speechless. <laughs> Everybody want to be a nigga until it's time to be a nigga. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> Iggy can be mediocre and 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 rise to success. No, and be yeah. cele- and be celebrated for it's doing perfect. exactly what Megan Thee Stallion is naturally yeah. born right. into. Or they just hire um, <laughs> black women as to writers, hire their right. song and, right, to write their songs. Right. Yeah, and then the pop thing. We've seen that too. I, I see it We've now. We've seen that too. Mm-hmm. Right now. I appreciate having you all here. Like again, I, th- I think it's an important discussion me you know as a man and and in the media and as a show host like I want to extend our platform here to women um as well to to just to learn from to speak with to learn from to sometimes even though I'm I'm the host of this right sometimes you got to shut up and listen sometimes you got to sit back and wind yourself and think about it so we could all get to where we need to go and so I think y'all helped do this today and that and that's not necessarily your job either you know what I'm saying like it's not your job but I appreciate when y'all come through and, and do it for real. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having yeah. me. And I appreciate y'all for watching. So hopefully we all learned something, man. Go out and support your favorite artists. Elevate your favorite artists. And stop limiting women. Stop limiting. Stop putting people in boxes. If she's dope, she's dope. If she's dope, she's Let's dope. raise the ball, all right? For the record, I'll catch y'all next week. Peace.